This is Skylab, a working laboratory developed by NASA to orbit the Earth. An endeavour that marked the transition from the exploration to exploitation of space. Skylab was 15 metres tall, 8 metres across and had some 1,000 cubic metres of working space. Skylab was divided into a lower floor with crew quarters, ward room and medical experiment area, with the upper floor dedicated to space technology equipment. The multiple docking adapter provided docking ports for the command module, as well as housing the control console for the solar telescopes and a series of cameras for conducting Earth observations. The unmanned orbital workshop was launched in May 1973 atop a Saturn V rocket. But there were some problems early on. The temperature in Skylab rapidly rose because a meteorite shield had been ripped off during the launch. In addition, the lab's solar array panels had not been deployed. The launch of the first Skylab crew due the next day had to be postponed until solutions could be found. The urgent need was to stop the rapid temperature rise, which was achieved by reorientating the satellite so it was no longer broadside to the sun. The next 10 days were hectic. Teams were immediately formed to find solutions to the problems. A major objective was to design and fabricate a thermal shield that could be deployed on the workshop to make Skylab habitable. Throughout the United States, teams worked round the clock in an all-out effort to perfect such a design. Meanwhile, at the Marshall Space Center in Alabama, crews were evaluating the installation of a parasol device in the Skylab underwater simulator. In conditions that approximated zero gravity, they also trained underwater in methods of freeing the jammed solar panels. But the actual work would have to wait on an eyewitness assessment by the astronauts in space. Time was becoming critical if Skylab was to be saved. Relief would come only from the thermal shield parasol which would be deployed by the astronauts when they reached Skylab. Ten days after the initial launch, astronauts Conrad Kerwin and Weiss were on their way to Skylab. It was the first step in the fulfilment of an opportunity to use men in space for practical humanistic benefits. After rendezvous with Skylab, a televised fly-around was performed to assess the damage. Most of the predictions were confirmed. The meteoroid shield had been ripped away, exposing the workshop's skin to the sun. One of the solar array panels had been completely torn off, and the other, only partially deployed, was jammed by a fragment of the damaged meteoroid shield. An unsuccessful attempt was made at freeing the panel before docking with the workshop. After a night's sleep aboard the command module, the astronauts entered the workshop and took steps at deploying the parasol. In mission control, optimism that the mission could be saved wasn't long coming as Skylab's temperatures began dropping rapidly. The parasol was doing its job, but there was still a shortage of electrical power. The stuck solar wing had to be pulled out fully. But thanks to the work of the backup crew at Marshall, the procedures were worked out freeing the solar panel. Astronauts Conrad and Kerwin went on their first spacewalk to repair the damage. This took three and a half hours and was difficult work, but they prevailed and were able to sever the obstruction and pull out the panel. Within hours, the power situation was nearly normal. The mission could continue, transformed from near ruin to success.
One of the innovations new to this mission in space was a series of life sciences tests. One of the tests was the lower body negative pressure test. It provided valuable information on the cardiovascular system. This was a measure of motor sensory performance, an experiment designed by a high school student. Using a punch board apparatus, the crew's hand-eye coordination was measured on a daily basis. Balance, orientation and perception so important to man's ability to function efficiently in space was another of the life sciences tests. The astronauts were instructed to exercise frequently and one of the methods was the ergometer or bike to help them keep in shape. This also served as a test for changes in metabolic activity while working or living in a zero-g environment. Throughout each mission, a vast number of tests were made on the eyes, ears, nose and throat and blood samples were taken and returned for post-flight testing. Skylab also gave astronauts the opportunity to test materials under zero gravity and vacuum conditions. The formation of crystals was the most valuable of all the manufacturing experiments. It resulted in crystals ten times larger than those grown on Earth with a much better uniformity of composition, so important in the field of electronics. The aim was to develop electrical systems that will perform more functions, be faster, smaller, less expensive, and require less power. But it wasn't all work. The astronauts had a lot of fun. Even something simple like blowing bubbles was a whole new experience in space. They could puncture them, pull them, pick them up, but they still wouldn't break. As can be seen, getting from place to place was also no problem in Skylab. Weightlessness itself can be lots of fun, as Pete Conrad demonstrated. No circus performer or Olympic acrobat could match this. Although Alan Shepard was the first to play golf on the moon, this was the first space ball game ever played. The first three tenants of Skylab returned to Earth after 28 days in space. Despite the adversity, it was a successful and novel mission in space. <laughs>